Hi dear love, welcome to our lesson on ancestors. Ancestral rituals or veneration is a worship that we do to just pay respect or homage to those that have come before us and we are legacy to. So an ancestral altar is what you see uh, often in homes of different people regardless of the religious or spiritual tradition or culture um, there is a extremely profound respect and appreciation for those that have gone or ascended on into heaven the Abba kingdom or the afterlife or the spirit realm and we remain to carry out their mission, their purpose, or simply their bloodline. So an ancestor is a parent, uh, a grandparent, great-grandparent, um, but also the parent of an antecedent, right? So the antecedent meaning grandparent, great-grandparent, great-great-grandparent, and so on. So an ancestor is any person or anyone from whom we all are descended. Um, and so, you know, you might hear in leg legalities, you might associate an ancestor with an estate that has been inherited or um, carried on or passed on through generation but ancestral worship or placing an altar for ancestors is a great way to break generational curses also to help us thrive in this lifetime remember we are our ancestors legacy and so that says we are serving the mission that they were unable to complete in their lifetime. And the spiritual idea and energy or energetic frequency that we are really elevating to when we pay veneration to our ancestors is meant to further that legacy by teaching it to our youth and to our children or future generations that then become our legacy. It's really important to note that when we set up an ancestral altar or when we pay homage to our ancestors we are not paying homage or respect to ungodly spirits or energy we are absolutely paying respect to those that we admire that have a contribution to mother earth and to future generations and whether or not they were able to make what you may feel or what may anyone else feel as huge contributions they had a godly spirit and they still do what you will find is ancestors will come to us uh, very much like spirit guides your grandmother may come to you your grandfather may come to you and you will use your spiritual gifts to acknowledge their presence it is quite likely that people you love and people that love you meaning there is a strong energetic connection between you and another their direct bloodline may come to you as well so that is because you will be open to their energy as much as you're really open to your own bloodlines energy 
So remember that energy attracts other energy. And that love that you have and that you hold um, is respect. And our ancestors know that just as our other messengers, manifestations uh, of the Most High. So, um, you know, just someone dying is really not sufficient um, in many religions of a condition for becoming an ancestor or an ancestral guide that we pull from. Remember, this is a way for us to provide and to um, welcome access to spiritual guidance and being spiritually empowered. So this is really pulling from those that have lived a measure of life that was of integrity and of godly energy. And this is of love at its core. Take China, for example. Chinese ancestral veneration or worship is um, pretty prevalent in uh, South China and there's a strong respect between the spiritual bonds and the um, lineage and the hierarchy. It's not based on seniority and really the understanding is that the ancestors are humans who have become godly beings. Beings who keep their own individual personalities, their identities, and so this is their foundation of the veneration that they hold for their ancestors. It is a part of that traditional patriarchal um, spiritual influence or religious practice in um, the Chi most of the Chinese culture or traditional kind Chinese culture and it has been placed in a, a component of religion that includes different concepts, emotions, and rituals. So one of the practices is that a person is thought to have multiple souls in the Chinese traditional religion. And this is associated with the yin and the yang of spirituality or Eastern traditional spiritual practice that we have in the Western uh, communities adopted thankfully adopted, um, but very respectfully. And so, uh, for example, it's categorized as Hoon and Po. And upon death, Hoon and Po separate. So generally the former ascends into heaven and the latter descends into the earth and or resides within a spirit tablet. Okay, so however, beliefs concerning the number and nature of souls do vary. One of the things that you want to take note of when you look at the different cultural aspects of ancestral veneration is the burial practice, the mourning uh, practice and process, also uh, funeral rites. Um, this is a normal process of family life. And so there's going to be different practices, different uh, rituals that you will see. And, uh, for example, uh, there might be Buddhist monks commissioned or hired to perform specific rites. Uh, there's playing of music, chanting. There might be parades in some cultures. There might be a funeral procession in the streets in some cultures. There's certain scriptures mantras that are created to drive evil spirits away and so look at that because it is a strong appreciation um, and just respect for our ancestors in the Baha'i faith uh, 
the belief is to pr pray for your ancestors as they pray for us on the other side. So that understanding is our ancestors want the best for us and we really wanted them to have the best and we still want them to have the best in the Abba Kingdom while they are in the spirit realm. I think it's very important to understand that no one tradition is better than the other and uh, even if you are not subscribing to a world religion, uh, your ability to pay respect to the dead is within your rights. And it is absolutely something that I personally believe um, that we are all required to do and that I, I encourage, um, deeply encourage for everyone to take a part of. Our ancestors are our teachers, they're our mentors, they're our friends, and they're our spiritual kin. So honoring that lineage is, excuse me, is really one of the first and foremost, most important things that you can do outside of worshiping our creator. We tap into that connection of our ancestral line, and this is whether you are adopted or blood related remember that energy attracts energy and so this is really that relationship that um, really defies human logic we honor the continuity of divine presence throughout our every day and our every night we honor their strength and their courage and their wisdom and their personal plight we pay respect and we admire their struggles and we seek to learn from them. And there is the ancient um, African proverb, know thyself. And you may have heard this, and you may have also heard, seek to seek understanding before you seek to be understood. So in the next video, we're going to go into specific ways that you can um, pay respect to our ancestors. So what are some of the ways that we can set up an altar? Well, it has been known throughout practice that um, putting food out on a plate, a specific area specifically for our ancestors to um, to have it is out of nurturing and that sacrifice um, that we're showing that profound respect so we're investing ourselves in that practice and it's the consistency that is really key there so you know you might find a plate of bread you might find uh, some sweets there. You might find a little bit of the family supper or dinner on a plate that they will put at their ancestral shrine or altar. And the altar can really, really vary. So an altar may just very well be a dish. It may very well be a place on a mantle. It could be a place on a table. Wherever it is, the key there is to make sure that it is undisturbed and that it is a place in your um, location, whether it's in your business, your home, that, you know, the, it's a low traffic area, meaning it's not frequented by others and the, the chance of it being disturbed or disrespected which is a violation is very low and it is something that you want to make sure people that frequent that area say you have company over or if you're in a nail salon you might even see it I've seen many ancestral shrines in um, different places that I've gone in um, that they understand what is it what it what it is why it's there and that they are not to touch it so, you know, religions are very different. Spiritual practice is going to be different. 
but the common ground there is ancestral veneration or respect. So traditionally, what you might find are even a number of glasses. You might find uh, the glasses are really symbolic to spirituality, but also the water is spirit. The water is spirituality. And the fluidity, the depth of, and the sheer power of water is very um, symbolic in, in, in recognizing the Holy Spirit but it is absolutely the most important nutrient and the one thing that we all have to have to survive in the fourth dimension or the life that we live. One of the uh, traditions is nine glasses, nine being the number of Oya. Um, and fresh water is, is set out to ward off uh, malignancy. Uh, bubbling water is said to be seen as an indicator of incoming negative energy. And we've seen that in movies. Hollywood has really taken that and portrayed it in multiple different um, movies that you might be aware of. And water is a pure uh, conductor of energy. So we often see and we know that of holy water, water is spirituality. So that's one thing that you really want to include in your ancestral um, altar is a glass of water. Now, water is, is vitality. It feeds um, the dead. It feeds our ancestors. Uh, what you might find is, and there's that appreciation, even as I'm sharing this with you, um, I feel my ancestors coming in because they're indicating their presence on my, on my body that indicates the past. And I can feel their loving and their nurturing um, energy just radiating over me and just telling me, yes, this is the right thing. Thank you for sharing. Please keep going. So water is that, that vitality. It is that wealth. And it is the number one resource, right? We've got water and time. And so, you know, you may find that if the water evaporates quickly, that it's a sign that they are absolutely drinking it, that they are absorbing your prayer um, and which we're going to talk about in just a moment, that you want to actually say a prayer, a mantra, a chant. You want to sing. You want to talk. You want to discuss and have a conversation. And absolutely, you can have a conversation with our ancestors. So, um, you know, when you are asking for our ancestors' help, which we'll talk about in just a moment in our third video, uh, we'll talk all about the conversations and why we call on our ancestors. Um, you're going to find that that water um, absorbs the negative energy too. It is a conductor. So that's really very important to include. You might find that there's an odd white film at the bottom of the glass indicating that your ancestors are working on your behalf. It's said to be um, that confirmation. And, you know, when it has had that time of evaporating, you will notice that um, that evaporation process is extremely spiritual. We have science that backs up how it happens, but when you are placing a glass of water in your ancestral um, altar or corner or place, you may notice that that water is evaporating pretty quickly, which defies human logic because you've already seen how you've seen the speed of how water evaporates in your space. And so to see it happen very rapidly is a direct indication 
that your ancestors are appreciative of what you're doing for them and to keep doing it. So remember that no matter what kind of structure or way you put together your altar, the important thing is to have that nurturing, that ongoing relationship with your ancestors. And so it can be, um, you know, made, created, constructed, and um, just, you know, do not forget about it. Remember that it's there. It's there for a reason. One of my clients made her ancestral uh, altar, and she would get up in the morning and talk to her ancestors all the time and she would begin with her mother and then her grandmother and she never met her great-grandmother I believe it was her great-grandmother but she uh, would feel her presence very distinctively know that it was a different energy and who it was because she was using her third eye or her spiritual sight or her mind's eye to pull in who that was that was interacting with her so in the morning, she would give them that respect. She would ask for their help. And we're going to talk about exactly what to say in our next, or what what is suggested to say in our next uh, recording here. But uh, once your altar is made, um, you know, the altar is going to grow. It's going to evolve. You may um, change things you know out of it you may put new things in it of course if you're putting perishables food items then you're going to change it out after you may say uh, a prayer or things of that nature and so remembering that it is a a form of of honoring so you might have um some things from nature, such as flowers, you might have grass, you might have um, picked wild flowers out on your walk, branches, leaves, um, anything like that. You might have uh, corn, you might have uh, something that is symbolic of the, the season. You may also have uh, your grandmother's uh, candy dish in your ancestral corner or um, altar. You may have pictures of those that have passed on or specifically who you know have ascended on in your family. And again, family does not necessarily mean blood family. So, when you're making an offering, um, the space should be uh, consecrated. It should be um, blessed. It should be prayed over. It is, um, a, it is an area of respect. And so we're going to talk about all of that, what you might verbally say, in our next audio. See you soon. So in the last audio, we talked about some of the things that you can put on your ancestral altar. And uh, we talked about food and things of that nature. One of the things I didn't mention is alcohol, wine, or what they call spirits, which I, you know, I just find it to be so funny and ironic. But um, any kind of um, spirit altering drink. We don't want to include. Why? Because it is more disrespectful um, to say they need that when we are pulling from their energy because their energy is very pure and we're asking for their help and we want to give all things of God to all of God. If that, I pray that that makes sense to you. But we really want to keep it pure and respectful. So one of the um, rituals or, or sayings of what I discovered is this. 
Now, the oldest adult, if you are um, doing this on your own, obviously you would you would say it, uh, but to say in a form of blessing the um, altar or right before you're going to provide that sacrifice of meal or uh, whatever that beautiful thing is that you're going to include in your altar is this. This is the night when the gateway between our world and the spirit world is thinnest. Tonight is a night to call out those who came before us. Tonight we honor our ancestors. Spirits of our ancestors, we call to you. And we welcome you to join us for this night. We know you watch over us always, protecting us and guiding us. And tonight we thank you. We invite you to join us and share our meal. And so the oldest family member would serve everyone else a helping of whatever dishes have been prepared. It might be a family gathering. It could even be a family reunion. And this is except for um, the alcohol. A serving of each food goes on the ancestor's plate before the other family members receive it. That is extreme respect hierarchy. During the meal, sharing stories of ancestors um, who are no longer among the living, this is a time to remember uh, the way grandpa used to uh, fall asleep on his chair. This is a way to remember what uh, Nana uh, made the quilting, the uh, clothes that she sewed and, and made, the loving and the nurturing from our uh, grandparents, our great grandparents, the stories that have been passed down through generation and generation. And these might be war stories. These might be stories that were told through genealogy of of living on a plantation. This may be um, the, 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 the stories of legacy and inheritance of the family land. This may be the, um, the physical um, markings and abilities that have been passed down, the likes, the accomplishments, the inventions that have been um, duly noted and appreciated and respected. These are the stories that are really pulling our ancestral veneration to us and fortifying future legacy. So we're telling this to our family um, and this is a reminiscence but this is a powerful way to pay homage to our ancestral line. Another way to do this is um, you often see this at Thanksgiving uh, where you are or you know any holiday that you're getting together you may do it on Sunday evenings where you get together and have dinner or what, whatever day of the week works for you um, where you are reciting your genealogy. When everyone has finished eating, you're putting everything away. You may meet in the family room or in the main room, and you may pass around um, cider, water even. It may be wine, uh, but it is to end at the ancestral altar or place of homage. So as each person receives the cup, they recite, they recite their genealogy. For example, I am Nicole, daughter of Verna, the daughter of, and, and I would recite my mother's um, parents and so on and so forth. So this is a great way to, to just pay respect and make no mistake about it, 
our ancestors are very visible and vocal. They will let you know when they are there. They may blow out a candle. They may knock on the door. They may uh, turn the lights on and off. They may move a chair. There is an indication there. On um, my videos, ancestors have come in very visibly, moved flowers behind me, um, and very much you can feel their energy all over your body. Now, does it freak you out? Sometimes it will, but I don't say that to definitely frighten you. I say that to make sure that you are aware of when they do um, indicate to you, thank you, so that you won't be afraid and so that you can have time to prepare your human for that confirmation. Your human, remember, is based on human logic, human conditional energy, which is all fear-based. You, on the other hand, are the soul who lives within your human. And so your energy is calling in your ancestral uh, guides, and that is out of respect. And they know that. And so um, here's another saying that I came across. So you might uh, pass the cup around. Remember, you're, you're, it's ending at the ancestral um, altar or place um, at the table. And um, it may be said of this. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, I am daughter of a family unknown. I am son of a strong family. I am daughter of a courageous bloodline. I am, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying that if you don't know exactly who the names are or um, anything like that. You know the energy. And saying that in my soul is even more respect because then you're showing admiration and respect through your words and description, which is amazingly complimentary. This is the cup of remembrance. We remember all of you. You are ascended on, but never forgotten. And you live on within us. You may light candles at your altar. You may use tea candles. You may use whatever candle speaks to you. That's very important. Because your human may say, oh, we can't get that. We want this because it looks pretty. But you feel drawn towards this other one that looks plain. You're drawn to it because your energy is connected to the reason you need that plain candle. Ego is connected to the one that looks very pretty because your human is ego and your human wants that pretty one. Use the plain candle. You can also place ancestral altars for your animals, you know, for your um, ancestors' animals. And, um, and have the ritual that speaks to your soul. It may be a song. It may be a lullaby that has been handed down. I know that we've had hand, uh, lullabies handed down in our generation. We are fifth generational uh, spiritual channels. And I would sing the same lullaby to my children that my mother sung to me, that her mother sung to her. And so forth down throughout our ancestral lineage. We pay homage to our ancestors because we need their help. They are in the spirit realm and they are aware of what is to come for us. 
Ancestral wisdom is what helps us break generational curses in many ways. What our ancestors were unable to do, we are able to do in extremely profound, innovative, miraculous ways. Being rewarded with spiritual gifts helps our spiritual journey in ways that often we, we find it difficult to find words for. Understanding that our ancestors gave us spiritual practices, rituals, sayings, uh, potions, um, elixirs, prayers, and spiritual practices that we wouldn't have had unless they instilled it in their legacy, which became our ancestors. That understanding is the deep veneration and honoring that we have when we are creating an ancestral um, altar or just having that profound worship and respect and prayer. It doesn't have to necessarily be in a ceremonial type of atmosphere. Um, and a ceremony really is the intention, the, um, the, the being present, and the purpose. But it does need to be a part of your spiritual practice, the understanding thereof. So you might light incense, you might burn sage, you may very well uh, be out in nature, you may be in a, a certain pose, but it really is the element of listening and just being in profound respect and welcoming of that pure energy from our ancestral guides. You may begin playing music, you may have um, some other sort of sound, you may just begin chanting. You may not even know what chants um, to say, and I'm of the belief that him, a hymn or humming um, a simple tune is not so simple. It absolutely is coming from your heart and soul, which makes it brilliant and priceless. There are some ways to begin um, paying homage or respect or even having a ceremony by asking permission and inviting our ancestors into our home or into that space. And though you do find some asking, calling in from all um, winds or northeast, southwest, from all directions, um, from all corners of the universe even, um, you may hear it being said as such. I am of the spiritual belief and practice that as you are creating your altar, that is when you are praying, that's when you are thinking of them, you are pouring your energy into it. In other words, you are becoming wrapped inside of that process, which is a ceremony in and of itself. I really am very careful about taking the commercialism out of uh, spirituality and a part of that is being able to just use what truly feels good to you, the soul. So your mantras, the music, the um, any guided uh, meditation or journeying, um, any closing or opening ceremonial um, verses or poems, any celebratory practices, any reflective um, moments, really is something that you can cultivate on your own. When the Spirit moves you, and we're referring to the Holy Spirit, I think it's very important for you to get up and dance, to sway. Whether you are playing um, music, auditory or not, 
sometimes you hear music because you absolutely are hearing your ancestors in their ceremonial practice. Dimensions are timeless. When you are paying veneration to our ancestors, they will show you, they will show up, they will bless you in ways that your senses will pick up on. So you may see your ancestors around a fire, drumming, dancing, singing, chanting, playing music, having a good time, having a celebration. You may see them um, having a party. You may see them eating. You may see them, them uh, walking and having a procession. And why are you seeing this? It's because they are pulling you in as you invite them in to your spiritual journey and your moment of honoring and spiritual practice. So I pray that this really helps. Um, there are some guided meditations that I'm going to just put out there for you to take advantage of, ones that I really appreciate and respect. But I really encourage you to trust the process and invite your ancestors in when you are trying to uh, break generational curses, ask for their help because they are undoubtedly right there once you invite them in, ready to help you. Remember, they are already in the Appa Kingdom. They are ready to help you, help yourself. And they are going to work on your behalf and your future generations, which are their future generations' behalf. Your children, your children's children. And even if you don't have biological children, they are still helping future generations through help, helping you. So I pray that this really helps you. I pray that you find value in it. And I pray that this really gives you an understanding of how to begin your ancestral altar, your ancestral veneration, and your ancestral guides, um, bringing them into your practice, the relationship you will have with your ancestral guides. Ancestral wisdom is unlike any other. They see our plight. They want to bless our journey. And we are to pray for them as they pray for us on the other side. Well, dear love, thank you so much for being a member. I'm enjoying the process. I pray that you enjoy yours. Mwah! I will see you in our next lesson.